Welcome back, chemist. We now move into covalent bonding basics. After this video, you'll be able to write structural formulas and dot formulas for covalently bonded molecules, identify shared and unshared electrons, explain the difference between single, double, and triple bonds, and write them using structural formulas and dot diagrams. Covalent bonding, if you recall, is different than ionic bonding because instead of now a transfer of electrons, we are talking about a sharing. A single covalent bond is made up of two electrons being shared between two atoms. One electron is donated to the bond from each atom. Covalent bonding occurs between nonmetals only. Atoms that are covalently bonded are different than crystals. Remember, crystals is a term that we use to describe ionic compounds. Here, with covalently bonded compounds, we're talking about molecules or molecular compounds. Here are some properties of molecular compounds. Covalent bonds are typically much weaker than ionic bonds. They have much lower melting and boiling points. Molecular compounds are solids, liquids, and gases at room temperature, and they do not conduct electricity or heat in any state. The chemical formula for a covalently bonded group of atoms is called a molecular formula. The molecular formula indicates the exact makeup of one molecule. For example, if you were to look at glucose, Glucose is C6H12O6. Notice it is not arranged in the lowest whole number ratio because this indicates the makeup of a molecule. If you change the formula for any molecular compounds or covalently bonded compounds, you've now changed it into a completely different substance. So it's really important that you never reduce the ratio of atoms to each other in a covalent compound. The number of valence electrons for hydrogen is one, group 14 is four, group 15 is five, so on and so forth. This part's important. When I mean number of electrons short, I mean the number of electrons short from being isoelectronic with a noble gas. So for example, hydrogen needs to gain one to be isoelectronic with helium. Group 14 would gain four, group 15 would be three, 16 would be two, and 17 would be one. As it turns out, the number of electrons short is the same as the number of bonds made. I am now going to ask you to show the bonding for covalent compounds. I find that it's really useful for students to do a rough copy and then to report their final answer. So that's why we always try to give you a little bit of a space to write some rough work down. So if you notice hydrogen, we wanna write this chemical formula as H2, but we need to write the Lewis structural formula and dot formula. To do that, you're going to write two hydrogens, each with its one valence electron. Notice how I wrote it so that each electron is kind of exposed to each other. As we mentioned, we're not gonna see a transfer of electrons here. Instead, we're gonna see a sharing. So that's why I drew a circle around each hydrogen. That circle indicates that these two electrons belong to each hydrogen so that each of them can be isoelectronic with a noble gas. The dot formula then will literally have two dots between the two atoms, and the structural formula is going to have a single line. The two dots and the line indicate a single bond, and a single bond is a shared pair of two electrons. Let's try a harder example. For oxygen, again, you will write those two oxygens similar to this, where those two unpaired electrons are kind of exposed to each other. If you notice, oxygen is in group 16. It's got six valence electrons and it's two electrons short from being isoelectronic with a noble gas. Well, as it turns out, oxygen wants to gain two electrons, but instead what's gonna happen is it's gonna form two bonds. And so that's why we'll see it form a bond there and form a bond there. 
The dot formula will look similar to this, where you have those four electrons in between the two oxygen atoms. And the Lewis structural formula will look similar to that. What you're seeing in the middle here is actually called a double bond. It is two shared pairs of four electrons. Outside of the oxygen is called an unshared pair. So anything that is not in between two atoms is an unshared pair of electrons. Here's another example. I would write the nitrogen the same way, each nitrogen with five valence electrons. Remember it's five valence electrons, each nitrogen really wants to have eight, so it's three short. That means that it needs to make three bonds. So it'll bond here, here, and here. The dot formula will look like that. And the Lewis structural formula, instead of having dots in between the two, it'll have lines. And so that is what nitrogen will look like. As you might expect, this is a triple bond and it is three shared pairs of six electrons. This is water. Here's a helpful tip. Whenever you have three um, atoms and you maybe have you know, two different types, put the atom in the middle that wants to make the most bonds. So for example, we know oxygen only needs to make two and hydrogen needs to make one each. So that's why oxygen would have to go in the middle. And then I would position each hydrogen around it like so. Remember, oxygen wants to make two bonds. Each hydrogen wants to make one. So we'll see a sharing here and here. The dot formula will look similar to that. And the structural formula will look similar to that. Notice that the only difference between the dot formula and the structural formula is that in the dot formula, we have two dots versus in the structural formula, we have a single line that represents those two dots. Here's another example. So as you might expect, this is a little tougher because we have oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine. Again, you put the atom in the middle that wants to make the most bonds. It's not going to be oxygen because oxygen only wants to make two. Nitrogen actually wants to make three and fluorine wants to make one. So it's kind of like a little puzzle here. So what we're seeing here is oxygen needs to make two bonds. So where it's going to form the bond there and there. Fluorine wants to make one, so it's going to form the bond there. And nitrogen is satisfied now because notice it has a total of one, two, three bonds to it. The dot formula will look something like that. And the Lewis structural formula will look something like that. Be really, really careful to make sure that you always include any unshared pairs of electrons. Students often forget those and that will definitely cause you not to do well on any quiz or test. Hopefully that helped you to understand how we show covalent bonding. Just like anything in life, this stuff takes practice. In order to get better at this, you need to keep working and I know you'll do great. Thank you so much for watching.